Studios live, and now I am joined by a man of high standing. I'm, I'm going to introduce you that way, Andy, and we'll go from there. Take all I can get there. He's yes, the sir. executive vice president of the Mississippi Cattlemen's Association and the Mississippi Beef Council and throws one heck of a barbecue. Mr. Andy Berry, how are you doing today, We're sir? doing great, Dave. Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Good to see you. I hadn't talked to you in a while. It's been a month or two, yes, sir. And, and what's so funny is we talk to people from all over the state, and, and we live, what, 15 minutes away from each Something other, like I that. think. Not, yeah. th- not that far. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're yeah. both right down there in southwest Mississippi. In, well, in God's country, yes, sir. Yeah, the, the good part of the state, <laughs> as we refer to it down there. Uh, now, now, let me ask you, let's just start right with the, the, the elephant-sized cow in the room here. Uh, we, we didn't want to have you in, but the stakes were too high. <laughs> what a pun. What Thank a you. Pun. Thank, I, I wrote that yesterday in my head. I have been waiting for you to get here so I could use that. Uh, but you and I were talking right before we went on the air, and I was looking at things earlier, and actually the price of beef trending downward right now. It, it is right now. It's it's down a little bit from their peaks back in, in the winter, uh, 2 to 3%. Uh, we're still a little higher than last year at this time, but uh, we we are seeing a little decrease in beef prices, which is welcome, uh, I think, for all our consumers headed into Memorial Day, which is a big barbecue weekend uh, where everybody has a little time off from work and gets to enjoy their favorite beef dish out on the grill. Now, let me ask you, does that usually have an impact on prices when we come up on a grilling holiday? It, it does. So there's there's a lot of factors that indicate kind of what, what the rest of the year looks like based off of beef sales for, for Memorial Day because it is such a big holiday that, uh, you know, the kind of the first thing of the summer. You know, down south we've been grilling for, for several months now, but, but you know, up in the northern parts of the, of the country, it's one of the first big grilling weekends that they'll have. Well, and let's be honest, we're in the South. I've grilled in December. I, I've grilled with snow on the grill. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, sometimes you just do what you got to do, you know. Uh, but even even with that upward pressure, even with all of those things, uh, prices trending downward. Now, is that coming out of the pocket of the cattlemen, or how is this working? Well, as we've talked before, you know, the, the, the typically the price of beef and what our cattle producers get for their calves that we produce here in Mississippi are kind of have an inverse relationship. And, and, you know, it taken an economist to really explain why that is. Uh, but as beef prices go up, typically we have seen cattle prices go down. Uh, you know, right now a 500-pound calf is worth about $1.50, $1.55. Uh, it's down about $0.10 cents from, from earlier this year, but it's about $0.20 cents a pound higher than it was a year ago. So we've seen some increases in our prices for our cattle, uh, but we've also seen tremendous, tremendous increases in our inputs. Uh, fertilize has been a, a killer. The two S, fuel and fertilize, are killing us. Uh, and both of those are directly tied to petroleum. Uh, yes, it, it's tied to petroleum in, in several different ways. Uh, you know, the, the, pro, the, the manufacturing of it, but also the delivery of, of that it takes fuel to get it there to our producers so it's a huge issue i mean we're, we're paying probably double if not more than double for a lot of our fertilize uh, equally for fuel I, I did the math earlier uh 487 a gallon is kind of what, what my local place down home has got off-road diesel that our tractors use that's so, a pretty good <laughs> price for diesel right now I well mean, that's, that's off-road that's that's True. non-tax so that's that's the dyed fuel uh you know my tractor, I've got a 100-horsepower tractor, has about a 30-gallon uh, fuel tank on it. That's 150 bucks to fill it up. I can go through that in a day without really trying if we're if we're down home working in the hay field or something like that. And so, you know, and that's not even comparing to the row crop guys that have, have much larger tractors than that for what fuel is cost. It's a huge, huge issue uh, in our industry right now. And it just seems to be getting worse. And I would assume as that increases, the price in the grocery store increases. It, it has to because, you know, we... We have to ship all our cattle out west, so, you know, the cost to get them out there to the feed yards is roughly, you know, the price of fuel per mile. So if the fuel is, is $5 a gallon, five twenty a gallon, that's how much we're paying per mile to get our cattle from here out to the uh, Midwest to those feed yards. And then the same thing, you've got to ship the meat back. So, yes, yeah, it's an added cost all the way around. It's just inflation is just killing us uh, for our farmers. We are, we are price takers. Uh, and so it, it, it hurts our cattle producers here in the state. And one thing, and I always try to underline this when I have you on, uh, going back to the beginning of this this whole list of the cost and the, the various prices that are built into this, the one person not really seeing a whole lot extra money is the cattleman that's actually Amen. raising the cattle. <laughs> Amen. It's, you know, it's, it's really, really a, a huge problem right now. 
uh, hay production is is what we're doing this time of year, getting ready for next winter. We're always preparing for the next season in the cattle in the cattle industry. So our guys, our cow calf guys, are getting ready for the winter. They're preparing those feed stocks. It's costing them double, if not triple. Uh, what it did a year ago to be able to provide hay and feed for those cattle coming up for this winter, and it's it's a huge issue. We've we've heard uh, rumors of a lot of folks saying they're going, you know, keep their cattle through the summer and then then possibly sell out. Uh, I urge them to hang on to those cattle. Uh, you know, we've got some good days ahead of us in the cattle industry, but right now it's a tough it's a tough road to hoe. Well, and that's part of the problem because the more people that sell their cattle, the less producers we have in the state, which means we have to bring it in from somewhere else, which is not going to drive the price down. Not at all. Not, and that's, that's, we're seeing this across the country. We've got huge droughts out in the West. It's really affecting our, our numbers of cattle nationally. And so, you know, we're setting up to have some good prices for, for our calves, but it's just going to take a little while to work through these inflationary uh, prices that we're seeing for all our inputs. Now, and somebody has a question on the C Spire text line, and I was about to get into this, so it worked out perfectly because some people might not realize. Uh, Mike in Richton says, why do we have to ship our cattle out west and then back? So from a commercial scale, to be able to be commercially viable, uh, there's a lot of climate issues that affect how cattle are raised in those feed yards. Now, we've done a wonderful job here, and my hat's off to the Land Water Timber Resource Board in Mississippi, Commissioner Andy Gibson uh, co-chairs that, uh, to expand the USDA, USDA processing uh, capacity for our cattle here in the state. So we've got double the capacity of what we did a year or two ago. There are local options out available. Uh, it's not hard to find somebody that produces local beef here in Mississippi to, to find some local beef. There's plenty of people out there and you know just a, just a cursory search on, on Google or Facebook and you'll find somebody close to you that has some, some good Mississippi beef for you to purchase here. Go out and get it today. And uh, you're welcome to call our office. I can help put you in touch with anybody that, that you know, across the state, depending on where you live, uh, to do that. I always offer that because, and, and we typically get a few calls of folks looking for that local Mississippi beef, and we'll be happy to connect them with that. And I would just like to say, playing back to what we were talking about earlier, Southwest Mississippi has a pretty good cattle industry. We do. We do. We're, there's some, uh, you know, South Central, particularly Mississippi, is, is probably some of the largest cattle numbers in, in the state. And so, yeah, we, we've got the opportunity there. But but going back to the, the gentleman's question, uh, climate has a lot to do. When you when you congregate these cattle in these feed yards uh, and the rain and the moisture that we get here, it, it's not just, it, it will turn into probably not a very humane situation of, to house those cattle and bogging in the mud. And then also all the the grain belts that we have out in the Midwest, and that's where all the, the packing facilities are at, the, the large commercial scale uh, facilities are out there. It's just kind of how our industry is set up. Well, and, you know, I've got a couple of questions here, which is the, the logical next question. Yes, for the feed yards and things like that, it's a climate issue. Uh, and they just have a better climate uh, that, that's more conducive to raising the cattle property, and you don't wind up with moldy grain and everything else. Uh, but uh, what can we do to get more beef plants in Mississippi after the feed yard process is done, or is it cheaper to just go ahead and process it there? How does that work? Well, I think there's a, there's plenty, there's a lot of opportunity for our producers to capture some more value here in the state. Getting those those USDA process, uh, certified facilities up and running, uh, there's been, uh, let's see, one that's just come online. There's two more that's supposed to come on this summer in South Mississippi. Then we've got another two or three over the next year that will, that will again, will more than double and will take care of a lot of our needs. It's, it's the demand. If people will go out and search and ask for and then buy the Mississippi raised beef, it, it, it's a demand lead type of uh, type of situation there. To where if the demand is there, people will feel that need, and so we've got to get people to buy this Mississippi beef, and then there'll be more people, more opportunities for folks to sell it. But we've got to create that demand. And what we hear from our Mississippi beef producers is that that are, that are actually you know retailing their their farm to table beef, they can sell their steaks really well uh, then they struggle past that a lot of times of people not wanting to, to go ahead and purchase the, the ground beef or the roast or things like that because it does cost a little bit more than what you're going to get in the grocery store so look for those things when you're out there purchasing Mississippi uh, 
beef products is to, is to buy those, those other products as well in the steaks. Well, and that, that plays into another comment that we got, said you can find beef shares everywhere. It's finding specific cuts, and that speaks to exactly what you're talking yeah, about. So, People want those steaks, You know, basically. if I if I could raise one that, that was full of ribeyes, uh, that would that would be great. But but you know, there's a lot of other things besides ribeyes that are on a, on a, on a beef animal that we have to also utilize and, and find a market for. We have some other questions coming in. Can you stick around? Sure, I can. Uh, so yeah, Andy's got nothing else to do. He's hoping to go to lunch. Uh, we will continue with Andy Berry here on Middays Live in the Element Wealth Studios on a beautiful Tuesday right after this. The studios, Dave Hughes here, Andy Berry with us, uh, Mississippi Beef Council, Vice President of the Mississippi Cattlemen's Association, a busy individual is what I'm saying. Uh, I have one question on the text line. You were talking about various plants and the, the possibility of, of seeing some more open uh, in the future based on demand. Uh, somebody specifically asking, any new plants in eastern Mississippi? Yeah, there's a lot in eastern Mississippi. Leeksville, there's a new one in Leeksville, uh, which is in southeastern Mississippi. Uh, there's another one in Loosedale, which is just down the road from that. Primarily in the south part of the state is where we've seen most of them. I know there's a new one that's going to go up around the Batesville Pope area here in the next year. Uh, you know, we need one, really need some up around uh, Pontotoc, Tupelo, New Albany, uh, that kind of northeast part of the state. But, uh, yeah, there's some some down in, in, the, in the southeastern part of the state that are USDA certified. So it comes back to demand. That's right. And, and also, now, when I say USDA certified, those are the plants that, that a, a producer uh, could, could sell their beef retail. There's a lot of other plants across the state that are what, what are called custom harvest or custom exempt to where, you know, I can take my calf there. Uh, you can buy part of that calf before we take it there, and then we slaughter it you know, take that half or whatever, a quarter or whatever it may be, and it, it's not it's not sold. The meat's not sold. You're buying part of the calf. We get it harvested. There's a lot of those across the state. That's another option for folks to do uh, to, to, if they wanted some local beef. And I would assume that that's the case in, in a lot of the situations where somebody does go in on a cow share yeah. and yeah. buys a certain amount of the, the cow, a quarter, a half, whatever, and then it goes to one of those processing plants to yes. be so, processed. Yeah, so they could be processed at either one of those plants in that case, but it, the, the, the the difference is you're buying an animal and not buying meat. If you're buying meat, it has to be USDA certified. Yeah, because once you're buying the animal, well, you're having something done with your animal. That's right. You know, when you're, when you're selling meat, we've got a great uh, safety uh, program here in our country for, for our food that we eat. And so that's part of that to ensure that we have a safe food to eat. You know, it's, I often use the example of, you know, I don't care what the, the price is per pound of, of whatever you buy. If you think you're going to get sick off of it, you don't buy it. So, so we that's why we really, when you retail beef, we, we we enjoy having that USDA stamp. That gives a peace of mind that it's been it's been inspected. We know it's a safe product that we're eating. You know, we were talking off the air that people don't really understand what goes into this. We just say these magical words. Well, the cow got processed. It is a very complicated process. You know, that it's, they go it's, you know from from that from the time it gets on your plate. You know, it's it's two or three years worth of work that somebody's put into that 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 piece of protein that you're eating. You know, from the breeding decisions, uh, from you know from having that calf and and raising it up and then weaning it. Uh, then feeding it out into, into harvest weight and then getting it processed and then packaged. There's a lot of, lot of work that goes into that. And, uh, you know, we, our, our producers do a great job of doing that. We're a sustainable uh, industry in, in how we operate. Uh, I think we're the original conservationists, you know, because we, our, our cattle eat grass. They take what no other animal can eat and turn that into something mighty tasty, which is beef. And, you know, other than Les Miles, who may chew on a little bit of grass from time to time, there's not a lot of us that enjoy uh, chewing on the grass. But uh, There's a bull <laughs> joke here, Andy, that you're setting me up for, and I'm not going to take the bull joke. I could, but I'm not. I'm trying to be good. Uh, now, let, let me ask you, you were talking about, uh, you know, with the, the cattle being shipped out west and the different climate and everything. Well, we're seeing a change out in that area. I saw a report the other day that, uh, say, Arizona up to Oregon and, and all of those areas, their drought continues, and it has continued to the point to where this is the longest continuous stretch of drought in the American West since the year 800 A.D. Oh, wow. I didn't know it was been it, that it, long. It, yeah. has, it has been a while since we've seen one like this. 
Will that have, going forward, any effect on shipping the cattle out there? Are we going to have to change the way we do things? You know, I I don't think immediately, uh, long term, you know, if that continues, sure, that's going to be a concern. From a from a non qualified, just a general observational uh, opinion of Andy Berry's, it's just my opinion. I, I think that the Southeast is poised to be in a great position over the next fifty to hundred years in terms of food production, be it be it live animals, be it uh, crops, just because of the water. Uh, when you go out west and just see how dry it is, and you and you, people are moving there and they're draining those aquifers. Water is a huge, huge issue. We see a lot of states that are having court battles over there. I think even Mississippi had one here recently over those aquifers. And so water is going to be a huge issue. We've got that in the southeast by and large. And so I, I just see plenty of opportunity where somebody wants to be in agriculture to come to the southeast, and, and you've got that opportunity there because you have moisture. Well, what we need to do is throw some bait out on the water. If we want to catch some of those fish and land them here in Mississippi to get them to move operations And, and, and we're seeing that. We, we, we've, we've had several folks that have, have sold out in, like, South Florida. And so they, you know, some of them will go to Texas. But we've had several that have stopped here in Mississippi because the climate is much more similar to South Florida versus somewhere in Texas. And so we've, we've had several operations that have cashed in down south and have moved up here and expanded their operation into Mississippi. Uh, Joe and Meridian, and here's a question. It's going to be a rough estimate. I can tell you right now that Andy can give you because every cow is different. So what price range can I expect for processing half a cow, half a beef? Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 it depends on the cow, and it, it depends on where you're getting that, it processed. That number has, that number has changed. I, I hate to give him a quote for that because, uh, you know, each farmer has a different cost and input cost of what it took to, to raise that there. Uh, if you give us a call, if you don't have anybody locally, we'll be happy to try to work with you and get you a number and get you somebody that you can, can, uh, can find to do that with. Uh, David from Bruce, just backing up what you're talking about and adding to the discussion, and thank you, David, appreciate it, says, been hauling feeders out west for some time now. These feedlots have their feed down to a science where the cattle are lean. They do. It's, it's, a, it's a, you know, there, there's folks that get doctorates in, in you know, uh, cattle nutrition, and so they know exactly what each little minute change an ingredient does and so they've got it down to science of to how much fat and how much lean and, and to what they want and to how to feed it uh, ver- versus what type of cattle they have so yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of lot of uh, like i said work that goes into getting that that food to your plate now y- y- we were talking and we had people asking about uh, buying a side of beef and you were talking about everybody wants steak and I- i'm going to be forward right up front i'm not a steak guy I'm a ground beef guy. I love some ground beef most I, well. I will, I will fire up that grill and go through a pack of ground beef. One, one of the family size ones because you know, you know how it works. Uh, but there's a lot of other cuts of meat that you can use this holiday weekend and slap on the grill, and you are going to be blown away, right? That's right. You know, there, there's a lot of cuts that we don't typically look for. You know, I, I'm, I'm guilty of it from time to time of sticking with the ribeye or sirloin or T-bone or something like that. Uh, but there's some other cuts out there. You know, you can sub a... Uh, a ribeye out for a uh, a chuck eye steak, and it's going to be a, a little bit less expensive. It's going to be just as flavorful as that ribeye. Uh, one of my favorite cuts that a lot of people don't don't tend to gravitate towards is a flat iron steak or a flank steak. Those are those are very very flavorful, beefy type steaks that are that are typically at a much lower cost point than your ribeyes and t bones and fillets. Um, you know, the tri tip is one that we haven't really caught on here as much in the south, and it's hard to find. Uh, but if you can find a good tri-tip steak, that is a that is a very beefy, juicy, flavorful piece of steak to try to do something different with. But, uh, you know, flat iron steaks, we use those all the time. We, we'll cook them and just eat them as a steak, or we'll slice them thin and make some fajitas out of them. But it's a, it's a great cut of beef. It's very versatile to, that, that people don't have a lot of experience with, and they're easy to cook. They're, they're really, they're very forgiving. Well, and that's the other thing that I wanted to point out, because people tend to treat beef as this umbrella term, and you cook it all the same. You heat it up till it's a certain color. Different cuts require different methods to cook them they, properly. They do, and I've, I've got a great resource for you. You can go to beefitswhatsfordinner.com, or you can go to our website at msbeef.com. We've got recipes. We've got cooking information, grilling techniques, all these different things, marinations. Uh, you know, one, one bit of advice that I would give you, for whether you're cooking ground beef or steak or anything else, get you a very good or, or just semi-good uh, instant read digital thermometer, a meat thermometer. 
it will improve your cooking and, and your eating experience tenfold to know what that internal temperature is so that you don't overcook it or undercook it and you can shoot for what whatever degree of doneness that you want with that and it really has improved myself i've been using it for 10 years and have it it's night and day difference uh in in how my 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 beef turned out after I, I bought one of those thermometers. Now, of course, going along with that, even if you have the meat thermometer, <coughs> you got to know the temperatures. You got to know the, the target you're shooting for. It doesn't yeah. matter how good your gun is if you don't know what target well, lot, you're shooting. A lot of at. those have those on, printed right on the thermometer. If not, true. Beef at for dinner dot com. We've got all that information there for you to utilize and, and hope you will pick up some of these cuts this this weekend. Enjoy with your family and uh, try them again. Andy Berry, Executive Vice President of the Mississippi Cattlemen's Association and the Mississippi Beef Council. Mr. Beef, I'm, I'm now giving you the title. <laughs> Beef, it's what's for dinner, y'all. Go try it out. Fantastic. Always enjoy seeing you, Andy. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on again. We'll catch up again soon. We will continue on Middays in the Element Wealth Studios. Now. 